Welcome to Combine Gas Law. In the last few videos, we've talked about various relationships between pressure, volume, and temperature of gases. And these gas laws are shown here. Boyce's law shows pressure and volume, Charles's law shows volume and temperature, and Gay-Lussac's law shows pressure and temperature. Now each of these laws is limited in that you're only able to look at two variables at once. So pressure and volume, volume and temperature, or pressure temperature. But we actually have a way of relating pressure, volume, and temperature all in the same equation. So these three are all represented by the combined gas law. It's a combined gas law because it basically combines all the previous gas laws that we've talked about into a single equation. And it looks something like this. P1 times V1 over T1. So the initial pressure times the initial volume divided by the initial temperature. The ratio of these three things is equal to P2 times V2 over T2. So you should be able to see that this is basically a combination of these three earlier gas laws. It's important to note that the relationship between pressure, volume, and temperature of a gas is a constant ratio for a constant amount of gas. So N, the number of moles of a gas, has to be held constant for this relationship to hold true. So how is a combined gas law going to be more useful than the individual laws we had? Well, for one, it basically shows all these relationships in one easy to remember form. And secondly, it helps us make predictions when we have two conditions changing, such as in this problem. This problem says that a 5 liter air sample has a pressure of 120 kPa at negative 50 degrees Celsius. What will the volume of the air be at STP? So the first thing that I'm going to do is write out my equation to show the work that I'm going to do. P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. So like normal, when I have an equation like this, I'm going to set up my variables and identify what they are. The initial pressure, it tells me, is 120 kPa. So 120 kilopascals is my P1. My initial volume is 5 liters. It tells me that the sample of air is at 5 liters at the beginning of the problem. So V1 is 5.0 liters. My initial temperature is minus 50 degrees Celsius. But just like in the previous gas laws we've looked at, you cannot use Celsius temperatures. You have to convert it to Kelvin temperatures. So to convert from Celsius to Kelvin, we always add 273. And that's going to change the T1 temperature to be in Kelvin. And now I'm going to get 223 Kelvin as my initial temperature. I've now established my variables for the left side of the equation. I'm now going to evaluate the right side of the equation. The final pressure, the final volume, and the final temperature. Now the question is asking, what will the volume of air be? So I don't know what my final V2 is. That's going to stay my variable. But I should be able to identify the final pressure, P2, and the final temperature, T2. And that's given to me right here, where it says STP. It wants to know what the volume will be at STP, the standard temperature and pressure. Well, my standard pressure is 101.3 kPa. And my standard temperature in Kelvin is 273 Kelvin. Now that I've established what my variables are, I can go ahead and plug them into the equation. So I have 120 kPa times 5 liters divided by 223 Kelvin as the initial temperature. And that's equal to 101.3 kPa times V2, which I don't know, over 273 Kelvin. If I now solve this equation, I'm going to see that V2 is equal to 7.3 liters. This is the new volume rounded to two significant figures. Now we can actually use the combined gas law to derive the original relationships discovered by Boyle, Charles, and Gay-Lussac. Now remember, the combined gas law is true when n is constant. But if any of the other values are constant as well, they basically get removed from the equation. So for example, if V is also constant, if I have a constant volume, that cancels the volume out of the equation. And I'm left with P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2, which is the same as Gay-Lussac's law. I could also choose to hold temperature constant, removing T1 and T2 from the equation. And I'll be left with Boyle's law. P1 V1 equals P2 times V2. 
So let's see if we can use this to our advantage in solving an actual problem. In this example, a given mass of air has a volume of 6 liters at 101.3 kPa and 0 degrees Celsius. What will the pressure be if the temperature increases to 100 degrees Celsius with the volume held constant? So again, I'm going to start by writing out my combined gas law. But this time, before I do anything, I'm going to recognize that the problem tells me that the volume is held constant. So this key phrase here, the volume is held constant, is going to tell me that I can cancel the V's right out of the equation, just to simplify things for me. And I'm left with P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2, which is the exact same thing as Gay-Lussac's law. Now I can go ahead and define what the variables are, P1 and T1, P2 and T2. Well, the initial pressure and temperature are given in the very first line. 101.3 kPa is my initial pressure. Now the initial temperature is 0 degrees Celsius, but I have to change that to Kelvin. So T1 is 273 Kelvin. Now the question is asking what will happen to the pressure. So P2 is my unknown. It also says that the temperature increases to 100 degrees Celsius, which is the same as 373 Kelvin. Now I can go ahead and just plug in my variables. 101.3 kPa as my initial pressure divided by 273 Kelvin equals P2, which I don't know, over 373 Kelvin. Solving for P2 is going to give me 138.4 kilopascals. So this trick of removing the variable that's held constant allowed me to solve this problem much more quickly because I had to go through less identification of variables. That wraps up our lesson on the combined gas law. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.